Here we're going to look at double integrals over regions in the plane that can be described via polar coordinates. So let's look at the following uh, picture. So say we've got this region in the plane which I'm calling D. So in the past, we split D up via rectangular coordinates. In other words, between a point X and Y here, sorry, X1 uh, and X2 here or so, um, and here between a Y point here and a Y point here, and that gave us all these little rectangles in here. But, you know, some regions are not very good for that, like circles, for instance. And so we might want to split it up with polar coordinates. So the picture would be like this we would split it up into pieces in the following way. So notice I've got two rays coming out from the origin, and then mo maybe this would be like an RI value, this would be like an RI plus one value, so those would be distances from the origin, and then this would be a theta one value, and then uh, this right here would be like a theta two value. So notice, by varying theta um, and r, we'll be able to build all of the parts of this region via polar coordinates. And here maybe I should use theta i and then theta i plus one to make it more general. So what we'll end up wanting to do is taking a sum over all of these types of little slivers of circles all of those multiplied by the function and that will give us like an approximation of this double integral. And so notice here we're like uh, ha have another picture which is really doing the same kind of thing. So this is like one of those slivers and what we're doing is we're finding the volume between the x-axis and this surface up here um, f of xy in one of these slivers. So notice this volume is going to be given by one of the function values. So f of ri theta j, and then times the area of this region, which is really a portion of an annulus, or a portion of a circle if you want. Um, and I'm putting approximately here because we're just taking some value of f but if you notice, if that's really, really small, then f is not very is varying very then f is not varying very much on that region. So that's why we get this approximate equality. So now what we want to do is calculate this um, aij component because what that will do is will allow us to uh, make a formula here which we can turn into an iterated integral which is our real goal. So in other words, uh, what we want to do is look at this region in the plane and so I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. So let's say it's given in the following way. So it's this sector of an annulus whose inner radius is ri, its outer radius is ri plus one, and then its first angle is theta i, its second angle is theta i plus one, and I can go ahead and write this uh, inner angle right here as delta theta. In other words, I'll set delta theta equal to theta i plus one minus theta i, so that's going to be the angle of this. Okay, so now let's recall The area of a sector of a circle with radius r um, and angle um, theta. And so just as a drawing, that's going to be a picture like this. Let's say we have theta here, and this is our r. And so that's like a pizza slice or something. So the area of this is going to be, well, let's think about it. The area of the whole thing would be pi r squared, um, but the area for just theta is obviously going to be a portion of that. It will be uh, pi r squared times how much of the circle we have here, but it takes 2 pi to get all the way around. So what it will end up being is theta divided by 2 pi. 
right? So it takes two pi to get all the way around. And so uh, this will be theta over two pi of the circle. So just think about it, 90 degrees is pi over two, and that's a quarter of the circle. It is pi over uh, two divided by two pi. So anyway, uh, notice the pi's are gonna cancel, and that's just going to give us uh, r squared times theta over two, like that. Okay, great. And so now what we have is not a sector of a circle. Notice it's like the sector of an annulus or uh, the sector of the outer circle minus the sector of the inner circle. So in other words, our area, so I'll call it AI, and these should really be uh, J here maybe instead of I. So I'll put a J there and this should be uh, J. So AIJ. So that's going to be the area of the outer sector. So that's going to be r i plus one squared times, um, well, delta theta over two because that's our angle in this case. Good. And then we have that minus r i squared times delta theta over two. So we get something like that. And so notice that is going to give us the following. We can factor a delta theta over 2 out, and then we have r squared sub i uh, plus 1 and r sub i squared. So that's a difference of squares. So that means we can do this as r i plus 1 plus r i, and then r i plus 1 minus r i. Okay, good. But now, notice that is going to be approximately equal to the following. So we're assuming that this ri and this ri plus one are very, very close to each other. So that means these are essentially the same. So they're both essentially equal to ri, which means this is approximately equal here to two ri, because we're adding the same thing to itself. So those twos are gonna cancel, and that's going to give us ri, times delta theta, and then notice here we have this difference, which we'll call delta r, delta r, great. So now we can go back over here, and we can replace this aij term with an ri, which I'll put right here, and then I'll put delta r, delta theta right here. Okay, good. So I'm gonna clean up the board and then we're gonna take this and turn it into an integral kind of using methods that we've done before. Okay, so we're good. So I'm using this sum that we derived before and recall that we had our differential area component is given by this ri times delta r delta theta. Remember the differential area component before was just delta x delta y. Um, and so in essence here we're adding something to our function or multiplying something to our function as we move it towards an integral. And so now I've got the limit as mn goes to infinity. So those are the number of subintervals for your radius component and your uh, angle component. And then I've got this double sum, which I've written as a single sum index twice. Good. And then um, in a similar way that we've done uh, to other cases, notice this is going to turn into uh, an a double integral from, let's say we have dr on the inside and d theta on the outside. So r can go from maybe a to b, and then theta can go maybe from alpha to beta. And so this is going to be r f of r theta. Good. So um, I should point out that I'm being a little bit um, not careful here because uh, usually we have a function f of x, y. So when you plug uh, a change of variables in here, it will actually be f of r cosine theta r sine theta. So uh, I've been a bit sloppy with notation just writing this f of r theta, but we'll uh, actually use this r cosine theta r sine theta as we do some sort of calculation. Um, okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board, and then we'll do a quick example of this. Okay, so let's look at this example. We want to take the double integral over d, where d is described by the region over here. So let's put a d here. 
um, of the function x plus 3y squared. And so notice that d can be described as uh, this region bound by an annulus in the first quadrant. So we're bound kind of inside by the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1, outside by x squared plus y squared equals 9, and then we're here at the positive x-axis and the positive y-axis. So notice we can go ahead and write that in polar coordinates in the following way. So we can write this as r theta such that, so notice that r is going to be between 0 and 3 because any time there we are between 1 and 3 units from the origin. And then theta um, can be written as between 0 and pi over 2. Again, because those are the theta values that put us in the first quadrant. Okay, great. So now that's going to allow us to take this integral and write it in the following way. So that's going to be equal to, so uh, let's go ahead and do the theta integral on the out inside maybe, so the r integral on the outside, so we have the integral from 1 to 3, the integral from 0 to, two, to pi over 2, and then we're going to have r times this function evaluated at r cosine theta r sine theta, which means we're going to replace every x with an r cosine theta and every y with an r sine theta. So here we have r cos theta plus uh, 3r squared sine theta, and now we're going to have d theta dr. So we've got something like that, and I should say this should be sine squared theta. Now, uh, let's recall one thing real quick. Let's recall that there is a formula that says that sine squared theta equals one half theta minus um, cosine two theta. And so that will actually be useful uh, to simplify this thing because otherwise we have to do some sort of integration by parts, um, but this will make it a bit simpler. So let's notice that this is going to give us the integral from one to three, the integral from zero to pi halves, and then we can uh, distribute this a bit. So this is r squared cos theta, and then plus three r cubed um, times the quantity one half theta minus cos theta over 2, um, and then we have d theta dr, d theta dr. So I'll clean up the board, I'll move that to the top, probably along the way I'll uh, go ahead and um, multiply that all out and simplify it as well. Okay, so I've multiplied some things out. I noticed that I missed a parenthesis in the previous thing, but I fixed that here. So notice we've got this double integral. The radius is going from one to three. The angle is going from zero to two pi. We have r squared cos theta, three halves r squared, cubed times theta minus three halves r cubed cosine theta over two. The theta integral is coming first and then the r integral is second. Although it doesn't uh, really matter in this case because we have two numbers over here, none of the variables depend on each other. But you could envision a time when uh, they would depend on each other and we'll see that in a uh, next video or something. Okay, so let's see. We have the integral from zero to one. We've got to do the theta integral. So that's going to give us r squared sine theta, taking the integral of this guy right here, the antiderivative of cos is sine, and then here we're going to have, this is plus three quarters r cubed theta squared, Again, we're taking the theta integral, and then minus, let's see what we're gonna have here. That's going to be three halves um, r cubed uh, sine theta over two. So cosine is going to become sine, but since we have that theta over two there, if we were to take the derivative here, we would get a half, which means if we take the antiderivative, we're going to get a two. So that's gonna cancel that two out in the denominator. Now you can just check if you take the derivative of this with respect to theta, you get back to that for sure. Okay, good. Now let's go ahead and evaluate this from zero to pi over two and see what we get. Okay, so uh, we have the integral from 1 to 3, 
So if we plug in pi over two, so here we're going to get r squared times sine pi over two, sine pi over two is one, so that gives us r squared. And then here we're going to get plus three quarters r cubed, and then pi over two squared, so that's gonna be pi squared over four. Great, and then uh, now notice we're going to plug pi over two in here, and that is going to give us sine of pi, which is zero. So that zero is out. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and plug zero in for theta. So sine of zero is zero. Theta squared evaluated at zero is zero. And then again, sine of zero is zero. So you don't get anything if you plug in uh, zero. Okay, so now we've got this needs to be an R um, antiderivative. So maybe uh, let's go ahead and put this together. Notice that this is 3 over 16 times pi squared R cubed. So that's what we've got going on there. Okay, good. So now let's take an R antiderivative. So that's going to give us R cubed over 3. So that's the antiderivative of that thing. And now notice we're going to have an r to the fourth over four. So we're gonna have to multiply 16 by four, that gives us 64. So that's gonna give us plus three pi squared over 64, r to the fourth power. And then we have to evaluate that from one to three. Okay. So I'm not going to do the arithmetic on that because at this point we're at a fairly simple spot and I'm, I think that's a good place to call it.